Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing um, this parrot out of the um, planner page. I thought it was a rather, it's uh, a nice pretty picture from Magical Jungle. I thought it'd be fun to do the carrot. The carrot? No, the parrot. I'm just going to zoom in a bit and we'll work through, um, work through him downwards. Now, I've got my Arteza Premium Pencils to colour with today. Now I realise there are two different sets with different pencil names so you may have to, if you are trying to colour along with your set and they're not exactly identical, you may have to just adapt slightly. But I'm not going to try and make him look like a real parrot, I just want to have fun with him with um, a variety of colours so it doesn't really matter if you stick to exactly the same colours or not. I'm going to do some oranges, I think, and reds and things. I'm just going to have fun with him. So I'm going to start with this orange. This is called Vermilion. It's quite a dark brownish orange. It's so, um, in case you haven't got the exact one, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to put quite a dark layer there and just reduce it up the feather. This is how I often do feathers. So darker at each end and lighter towards the middle. I'm leaving a gap because we're going to go in with a different colour. So I'm going to do exactly the same technique on these feathers at the front. It looks quite red actually this colour to me. I'm not sure it might look very different on your screen. So I'm pressing quite hard at the end and then reducing that pressure as I come towards the middle. Okay, and now I'm going to grab a lighter colour. I'm going to go for the orange. Oddly, in this set, we've got pumpkin orange and orange. Okay, now I would guess that this was the pumpkin orange because it's slightly darker, but it isn't. That's the main orange, and although the case is darker, when you write with it, it's actually lighter than that one which is um, interesting. That's why people swatch, so they can be sure as to what they're doing. But I just know that because I've used them a little for a bit. So I'm going for the orange. So, and we're going to go over the top of the area where we started to fade and then meet in the middle with a lighter touch as it meets. That's right. And the same here. So over this bit and this bit, and then start to reduce our touch as we get towards the middle. And hopefully you can see that that's not just the one colour of orange. Now the ones that are behind, I feel that may might be slightly darker, so I'm going to do them in a red and orange. So I'm going to grab the tomato red. This is the mul. I've only got I've got three, four reds. I've got a true red, a wine red, a rust red. So the wine red's very dark, and the rust red's very brown. So, but this is my sort of most orangey red. So that's what I would go for if you're picking. Um, you want a near colour. So I'm going to use exactly the same technique and I will use this throughout because I think often feathers have a bit of a shine and if we can make them look lighter in the centre that will give that impression of a little shine. We don't want, I'm not leaving white you notice, that's because I tend to do that if it's metallic and it's really really shiny and um, feathers aren't like that polished shine. No. And what I'm going to try and do here is line this up with the top of his head because that's where he would be catching the light, assuming the light was coming from above, of course. So it's just a matter of working on each one. And I do them all separately. I think that tends to look more natural somehow with the way the colour flows sure it just and it helps me to know what I'm doing to stick to my own plan I think it helps to keep each one looking individual if 
I went right across here, I would be colouring over the black a lot and uh, it might be slightly noticeable. It might take away the fact that there's these are individual feathers, so not all one group. little ones yeah I think I'll do th whoops this one oh this one and then this little one here yeah. okay now I'm gonna take the darkest orange that I used before which is the vermilion I'm just gonna sharpen it got a little blunt and we're gonna do what we did with the other one with the other feathers so go over the top of the red and here and then just join it with a low pressure so it looks lighter in that place I find it quite fun although using the same colour over and over can get a bit tedious when we're not doing a huge area so it's quite nice to just chill not have to think about what colour I'm using for a little while and just keep using the same one over and over I can just concentrate on the sound of the pencil and the action and filling the space clear my mind of everything else which is rather nice I actually feel quite sorry for people who don't have a hobby where they can do this sort of thing and just really relax. I find it makes such a big difference. Even when I'm really mega stressed, which I have been lately, um, it's uh, very helpful. I can switch off for a little while, which is really lovely. Yeah, I've been mega stressed because the children are doing their exams. We've had a few problems with uh, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, this. I'm filming this way in advance, so hopefully all is well by the time this video goes out. Um, I'm going to use the vermilion now to do these group of feathers here. Use the same method I have been. It's just been um, quite a stressful time. I thought um, they were both fine stress-wise, but uh, it seems like um, health issues suddenly raise their heads, destroying exam week, as if there's some, certainly some stress going on. So we're using the orange in here, which uh, we didn't really know was there. So, uh, tricky times oh I didn't do that last one and I'm going to go back in whoops with the vermilion and uh, do this I'm going to change the color up a little bit um, now because although I want to keep it within these oranges and reds I rather like it I'm going to lighten it up a bit it's got a really nice selection of oranges in this um, section I'm actually going to go for the pumpkin orange now um, yeah sorry I'm just checking my selection deciding if that is what I want to do and push him up a little bit and I'm going to do this sort of section here so what I do, you see I'm doing little sections of colour, I find it easier to sort of pick a section. Now we're using the same technique, so I'm not going to explain it again. I'm sure you know by now what's going on. 
I'm not sure what to do with his eye either. I'm looking, I've got some pictures in front of me, I shall have to have a look. See what happens. Sometimes they've got a little black or white part around the eye, like black or white feathers. Hmm. Be interesting. We'll see. Bring that up a little bit. And with these, I'm actually going to use a yellow, but I'm going to use the the um, turmeric yellow, which is quite orangey, as you can see, to just um, bring those together. I find yellow a little tricky to blend, but this is quite an orangey one. I often find there's a blend line, you can see it here. I find it harder to get rid of it with yellow, but I'll show you. I've got a little trick up my sleeve, which I'll show you. It's a funny phrase, isn't it? I guess it's a magician phrase, trick up my sleeve. So we're back to our orange pumpkin. What I do is I just gently draw a few lines here and there on that blend line to try to um, stop it looking such a defined line. Hopefully we disguise it slightly. Yeah. It's not brilliant, it doesn't really show in the camera does it? Let's try a bit more. Mm, I think we'll have to leave it there. Now these ones here Again, I want to do a little bit lighter, but instead of going from the pumpkin orange, I'm going to use the orange because that's a closer shade to the turmeric yellow. So, but I'm still going to use the same technique. So, we're going to go in here with a little bit of darker and reduce it, and from the tip upwards. Yeah, I've, I, I think I've explained a lot of times before, I'm recording in advance because of the fact that it's the school holidays. It's difficult me, for me to record. I'm going in now with the turmeric yellow, um, because with the children in the house, um, they say, oh, it's fine, Mum, we'll be quiet. I may do an experimental record with them and see whether they really are capable of being quiet, but I'm not convinced. Now... This little area under here, I'm just going to do it in the tomato red. And I could record down in my kitchen, which I was doing for a while when during lockdown, because they were home all the time. But I had quite a few complaints about the light in my videos not being very good. There's not a lot of natural light in the kitchen and, and uh, I had some problems with my lighting. So I decided that rather than have um, that I would just record um, lots in advance. That's not to say I won't do a few because I think I'll get to the point where I really want to because I'll probably miss it. And before we move down we've got to address these areas here. Now hmm, I'm thinking I might do red around the eye. I might go light though see how it looks maybe in here too but not just red I'll put another color in so maybe I'll do that with the eye as well so I'll grab my darkest orange which is the old vermilion oops and uh, just join that up and then go over this Let's see if that works I think it should. Yeah. Okay, now we've got all the body to do. Now I'm going to do the chest in different colours to this. So I'm going to deal with the chest because we've done this red bit. I'm going to use this vermilion that's in my hand to do the next bit. I'm sort of tempted to do um, to do them all different colours but if we get lighter and lighter as we go down it will have a weird look, sort of rainbow look. So what I'm going to do instead is to do a little bit of vermilion in each of these and then just fade the colour down. So you see I'm pressing, this is what I did with the other one is just press lighter as I went down so a bit harder under here and lighter as I go down. But 
but also as well as um, remaining quiet for my children they will be wanting to make their videos too so I'm going to go for the pumpkin orange on these um, red ones they um, have their own channel um, Minecraft Stoby it's called Sam and Toby Stoby and uh, they're getting more popular which is great their videos are getting more, a few more views so uh, that's really exciting for them they actually started making videos before I did um, now I'm going to go in with the orange and just finish off this bottom piece yeah they started making videos quite a long time ago and then they stopped for a while and they started again and uh, they're having a lot of fun with it which is good um, now these feathers um, hmm, I think I am going to go for the two oranges I think that looked that would be a bit similar to that yeah I know we'll go with our um, pumpkin orange first and we'll start at the top with pumpkin orange and just reduce it down and we'll do that on every feather so we'll do these a little bit differently we'll make the bottoms lighter and then it'll uh, as they overlap it will give a more three-dimensional look and it just is a different looks a bit different this is the technique I will use for fish scales and um, roof tiles so you would have seen it before if you've watched some of my house or fish videos so it's nice and simple it doesn't need to be perfectly well blended because we're going in for it's better not to try not to go over the one above but I'm just not that good at staying in the line some people are amazing particularly I've seen some mega neat pen ones where people just seem to get a perfectly even coverage of pen and stay in the lines exactly I don't know how they do it I really don't I mean I know perhaps they're using a pen with a small nib but even I find that if I do that I get streaky stripes in my in my colouring I guess it's just a mastering the technique in the same way you have to master pencils but staying in the lines just is not my forte I'm just going to push it up a tiny bit or else I'm going to end up chattering away and uh, you won't see what I'm doing it should be unfortunate I know a lot of people do it though which makes me feel a little bit better when I watch a video and someone does that I think phew I'm not the only person that does that I know there are people who are really really brilliant with their videos they don't do that but some people do but I do watch other people's tutorials and I sometimes take tips in like the way they're doing things you know but uh, the way they're filming and that sort of thing yeah, I mean but uh, I try to just be myself and do my own thing because I think that's um, yeah I'm going to do these last ones the same I think that's uh, best really I don't want to copy anybody else I know there are people that do quite different videos to me like they'll do a whole picture and that sort of thing but I decided that wasn't where I was going to go I wanted to do shorter ones that were more manageable for me as well as others okay I'm going to leave those other feathers I shall do them a different colour so that is our pumpkin orange we are now going to move to the orange and uh, start back up at the top go over what we've done already and then take it almost to the in fact I'm going to fade it down right to the tip but this isn't our final colour but I'm going to do the um, turmeric yellow and I figure if I put some orange all the way down it should blend in nicer more nicely I don't know better it will blend better gosh my English you wouldn't think I was a freelance writer would you 
who I haven't done any writing for quite a while, I haven't had much work in, which has been really useful because I've been able to film these videos and uh, work on my website and uh, do all sorts of things, get my news, sort out my newsletters, that sort of thing. Um, it, all the details of those things are in the description of the video, so how to sign up for my newsletter, where my website is, etc. My website is um, has varied content. It does have a list of the videos I've released lately, so that um, people can catch up if they uh, if they want to. It has um, some hints and tips and techniques as well, reviews of books and materials. Maybe I can't remember. Um, and it has some step-by-step -step tutorials which are photographs rather than videos because I know some people prefer that. So if you actually, if you know anyone that prefers non-video tutorials then you could perhaps point them in my direction, show them what, uh, what I've got. I am planning on adding to those. Um, there may be more by the time this video goes out anyway. I try to add new content quite often anyway, but um, I want to, um, because in the holidays, summer holidays, I won't be filming videos, I thought I would do lots of step-by-step -step ones instead with photos because I don't need to speak. So it doesn't matter if the children are in the room making lots of noise or recording their own videos because I'll just be taking photos. So uh, that was my thinking there. So I might have, but I tend to schedule them so they don't all go up at once. I think um, apparently search engines prefer that, but I think people do too because then they're not overwhelmed with content all in one go. It means when you come back to the website, hopefully there's something new for you, which is nice. My newsletters, I um, sort of keep you up to date with what I've been doing, perhaps what I've been colouring with some photos or um, I'm going to go with the turmeric yeah no, I'm going to go over the top of everything with this um, perhaps um, telling you what videos I've made um, that sort of thing um, if there's an art sale I might let you know so you can take advantage um, I might um, um, I might uh, just keeping you up to date really with everything. I've only done a few at the minute but I would only send them out once a fortnight unless there's something really pressing that I need to tell you about that's really really exciting that has a sort of time deadline. You know perhaps um, someone's got a competition or something that I think it might be worth entering or I don't know. I can't really think but that sort of thing. So uh, I just put things in that I hope you find interesting really and try and make it a little bit different. Oh, the other thing I do is sometimes put in an archive video, a link to one that I did a long time ago that maybe people who haven't discovered me from the beginning, obviously when I first started I had no subscribers, so uh, anyone that sort of is new might think, oh, I haven't seen that one, that looks interesting sort of thing just for a little idea as to what else I might have on offer which is fun so that's the main part of him and now we've got this the bottom part so this is the bottom of the wing and then we have the tail now I'm thinking that maybe the bottom of the wing shouldn't be too different to the top part but maybe we do the tail in red so it stands out a little bit so I'm going to think about this um, and maybe start to make it a bit darker so then it ties in with this being darker. So I'm going to grab the vermilion which is the darkest um, orange to do these. You can see it's a little bit darker than what we were using before, almost reddish anyway. I'm going to take that almost to the bottom, oh, in fact it does go to the bottom. And we'll use another colour on top just to finish that off in a minute. But if we just use the one colour, then it will still be pretty dark. I'm 
to make that bit dark so you can see the edge of that feather where there might be some shadow. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going over this bit with a few more layers and then less as we go down and also less pressure on the pencil. It's quite hard to get used to knowing how much pressure to use but uh, it's just something that comes with practice really. Okay so what's that? That was the vermilion so we need the pumpkin orange which is the next one and uh, I'm going to use that just over as we faded it and towards the bottom. on each of the feathers. I'm doing each one separately like I have been all the way through. I just think that gives a better look. It's raining. get a lot of rain in the UK. We sort of get used to it. I used to try and avoid it but since having children and having to do a school run regardless of the weather I guess I've just got used to it. So tail, as I say, we're going to do some red. So we're going to do the tomato red. And I'm going to do some red at the top and bottom this time, just to make it look a little bit different to the other feathers. It's been more like the ones on the head. Yeah, so when you do a school run, you have to go and collect the children from school or take them to school. You can't wait until it stops raining. You just have to go. So I just got used to going out in the rain. Actually, one of my boys likes going out in the rain if it's quite a warm day and he's quite muggy and hot he absolutely loves being out in the refreshing rain particularly when we get I don't know if it happens in all countries but sometimes we get really enormous splats of rain but they don't come very often so that's quite fun and uh, he particularly likes that sort of rain so we're going to use the vermilion next where um, you don't get massively wet either because the because the splats are so far apart that you don't get hit with them that often. It's quite funny. We um I understand in some countries they have lots of words for rain and I don't think we have enough here to describe them like big splatty rain or drizzly the sort of really the rain that makes you really wet is a really strange thing to say but um, I'm going to use the turmeric yellow just across this last bit. Um, it's where it's very penetrating so it penetrates through your hair and clothes really quickly even though it's very small droplets. It's uh, quite odd that we have rain, some rain that makes you wetter than other rain. But uh, that's us in the UK with our rain. Right, that's him. We've got to do his his feet and his beak. I'm just going to zoom out. And his eye, actually. So I think he's looking quite smart. Now I'm going to stick with my turmeric yellow for the beak and feet. I'm going to do them yellow. I know birds' beaks and feet aren't always yellow, but I just think it will work well in with our theme. So I'm going to think about the fact that he's some of his feet is in the light, it's going to catch the light on the top bits. The same with the beak. This is going to be darker under here and under here. I'm going to ignore that line, it's probably supposed to be shine but I'm just going to ignore. And I'm going to take a different yellow to finish them off. This is called lemon yellow but it's actually really bright so I think it will work really well. And I'm just going to use a really hard amount, um, push down hard to get a nice layer. There we go. Now I'm just going to use a bit of yellow on here as well. So I think this needs burnishing in. And of course that makes it look slightly orangey but we just get a slightly different colour in there which I think is quite fun and the eye, what I'm going to do with the eye I'm going to use my black and go over the whole area 
like that and he doesn't look very pleasant don't worry we're going to use a white pen to just do a little dot and a slight line Oop. there we go I think that looks better than the white eye and slightly more realistic so there's our parrot let me zoom out just more so you can see him in full let's twist him so he's straight I think he's straight there it's quite hard to tell because that branch isn't straight but I think he's straight so there he is um, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the little demo and happy colouring